Hello, and welcome to Here's the Thing with Robbie and Jose, where we explore relationships through a male and female perspective. With me, as always, is the lovely Robbie. Hello, Jose. Hello. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to have some good weather, so I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's Texas, so you never know what you're going to get. That's true. We can have several seasons in one week. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And we do a we, lot. Absolutely. But, you know, anyway. Yeah, if you're not from Texas, I wonder, I really wonder what it's like, like on a year to year basis in like other places where they know what the wet, like California is like, it's the same all the time. Well, I don't know. Things are changing Hawaii now. for sure. Is yeah, like that's that. what I'm saying. Like, what's it like to know every day? Like, oh, it's going to be this temperature. Yeah. Sounds boring. <laughs> I mean, I complain, but at the same time, like, I, you know, I like the seasons. I guess I like for to us, it would suck too, because we both love fashion. So then you wouldn't have seasons of clothes. You right. wouldn't have. Right. That's why everybody in Hawaii wears shorts and, you know, the Caribbean and all that. Maybe like, like really boring wardrobe. Yeah. Like yeah. here we get to have like winter stuff, spring stuff, summer yeah. stuff. But the only time that I dislike it when it's an, uh, just chaotic like that is if I have plans. Like if oh, you're going to have sure. like a, an outing, you know, like, like a, a wedding barbecue and then it or rains. something. Yeah. <laughs> when you do stuff and you plan like a barbecue and you get, you know, all the beer, you call everybody up and then it turns out it's going to be raining that day. You're like, dang it. Mm-hmm. Ah, and that's the only thing you can't control is the weather. But that's the only time that it's not great. Yeah. But it, it works out wonderful when it's like during the week it's crappy and then the weekend it clears up. It's like, yay. Oh, I had the opposite of that. It seems like it's always nice when I'm stuck at work and yeah. then on the weekends it's like freezing or raining or. Yeah. It is I, just like, yeah, trust me, I, I, I know. But actually it might tie in nicely with. Uh, oh, yes, our topic. that's true. <laughs> um, so if you're just joining us today for the first time, we are doing a segment on the five love languages. Mm-hmm. Um, so last week we talked about words of affirmation and then we actually did a gift episode, episode four. So if you haven't listened to that, go back and listen. Um, we were talking about the benefits of giving gifts and getting gifts and like what to do. And so we've already kind of covered that. But um, today we're going to be talking about quality time. Quality time. Quality time, man. Give me that quality time. All <laughs> girls love a quality time. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I initially thought of when, you know, when you said that this was going to be um, this one. I was trying to my best to try to define that because mm-hmm. I think it's and, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but it could mean different things to different people in different yeah. couples. Like yeah. that athletic couple that's always it's so annoying <laughs> that they jog together. <laughs> they don't know how good donuts taste. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, we, like I said, we can get into it. But uh, I'll let you. Yeah, there's there's different aspects of that, and just to also too, we are referencing the actual book by Gary Chapman. Um, the five love languages. This is a widely known book. Yeah. So if you if you haven't read it, you've probably heard about it. Yeah. Um, or I mean, I don't. Is there anyone that you know that's never heard of? No, no. You can say love language to just about anybody, yeah. any adult, and I guess younger people too, I suppose. But uh, and they would know exactly what you're. Yeah. What so you're referring good job, to. Gary, for spreading the word. Yeah. I yeah. guess I don't know if he came up with this stuff. This made it sound like this is the singles <laughs> edition. Also, there is a married one, which uh, I mentioned last week. I didn't know that there was two separate ones. I didn't even know this this line was here. I just like, oh, it's. I thought it'd be the same, but yeah. Apparently not. So, um, and in the book, with when they describe quality time, they describe it as um, a central desire of quality time is togetherness, which the book is saying that's not the same as proximity. Yes. And so I think some people may be confused about that, or maybe, again, if that's how you speak that language, yeah. but some guys have said like, well, I'm here, aren't I? Dang right. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> you being physically here is not the same as spending uh, quality time. It kind of is. <laughs> not, not quality, but time for sure. Yeah. I don't know how much quality you're getting out of me. But, but yeah, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Here. Like if you're if you're in a situation where your spouse is, let's say they're always at home, but they're always playing video games in another room or they're always outside in the garage or whatever, like, and you don't really see them or really converse with them, except maybe like you have dinner and then they go back out and do whatever. And then you go to bed at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's not quality time, but some guys would be like, well, I'm always at home. You always have access to me. So in my mind, I'm taking that as quality time. Well, yes, yes and no. So there's the other part. And this is regardless of whether you're a guy or girl, this is kind of how I see it. Um, Quality time for me is doing something that I enjoy doing and my partner is there doing it with me. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky because 
they might not like to do those things. Right. So, so in that scenario of like the video game thing, right? So let's just say for the sake of argument, and I don't play video games, but I know a lot of guys do and a lot of people in general like playing video games, but they like playing video games. So they're doing it and playing. I've seen some uh, where women will sometimes go and sit next to them and then they're enjoying their partner, enjoying the game, if that makes sense. Yes. So, so they themselves don't have no interest in the video game. Maybe they're on their phone, but they're in the same area and he's having fun and I'm enjoying him enjoying himself. Right. So when that happens, you can, in my opinion, a guy that's playing video games is like, yeah, I'm, I'm spending quality time because I'm doing something that's fun and my best girl's right here yeah. next to me. So like it's a win-win that's as far as saying. I'm concerned. You can define it, define it differently. You <laughs> yeah. just don't know. It's like- but it, yeah, but, it, but, it, but I would say that if she wasn't around me, I think it's like, yeah, they might think that it's quality time only for them because they're enjoying it, right? Yeah. So, so for instance, if your if your um, girlfriend, wife, whatever, likes to go shopping, but you don't, but she wants you to enjoy that with her, and again, that's the only other time that it gets a little bit tricky because in that situation, they usually want you to participate, mm-hmm. and they'll ask you questions. Where if a guy's playing video games, he's not going to tell you about the video game. <laughs> He's going to be jumping up and down, but he's not going to be like, look, babe, look, 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 you know, like, look what I just did. Cause she's going to be like, oh yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to act Keep excited about that kind of stuff. Let me tell you. But it means something to them. So yeah. I, that's why I'm saying like you, you, if, and I'm not saying you should um, patronize them or anything like that, but you should definitely like, it's special to them. They're having a good time. So as much as you can be like, oh, that's, you know, that's pretty good because they want you as part of, it's, it, with the shopping thing, for instance, mm-hmm. you want him, you want input. Like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And does this, what does, it, and the guy might be like, I, I doesn't mean anything. So that's what I'm saying. If you trivialize, trivialize it like that, mm-hmm. it's dangerous, right? Because it's like, yeah, I don't care about your silly little game. And it's like, yeah, I don't care about your silly little outfit. Well, that's what they like doing. You know, they're just trying to bring you into that world if yeah. you can, right? But but if you, like I said, like the, the, the jogging couple, if they're both like jogging mm. and they jog together, they're probably not talking a lot, but they're just enjoying yeah. the run and the fact that their partner is right there next to them. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple of different aspects or what they call them dialects of quality time. And one of them was um, sharing thoughts and feelings through conversation. That's quality time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> According to Gary Chapman, it is. But um, so, I mean, they're basically listening out like, here's some things that um, can define quality time. Mm. So if you're sitting on the couch, not speaking to each other, some people may perceive that as that's not quality time. But if you are looking at each other, you're engaged in a conversation, you know, eye contact, all that kind of stuff. That's more of a quality time because it's something that we are sharing together rather than just being in the same place looking at the same TV or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, and again, you know, we, we words, right? Words matter. But sometimes, cause I was just going to say that sometimes it's nice just to share, um, silence with one another, yeah. like, believe it or not, like, and, and, and I'll give you an example, but, and maybe this is not the best example, but let's say you're on vacation and you're in a beautiful location and you're watching the sunset. It's like, don't ruin it with words. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I feel like that sometimes at the pool. It's just like, I just want to lay here and close my eyes, drink my beer. I don't really want right. to talk. Yeah, like, no, exactly. <laughs> I'm in my floaty, exactly. you know, it's like. Exactly. And so sometimes um, just doing that and sharing that experience with that person, mm-hmm. again, for me, um, I would consider that as quality time because we both saw that sunset. We both experienced it. We can reference it and, you know, you never know. You might be years later. Remember that sunset we had when we went to Hawaii the first night we got there? They lost all our bags. You know, we got checked in late, you know, blah, blah. But remember that sunset? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, I do remember that. And if you take that away, all the rest of that stuff is, again, trivialized because you're focusing more on after all that, you still got to enjoy a really beautiful sunset and then tomorrow you can deal with whatever. Where a lot of times it's the opposite, you know, like you have that good sunset, but it's like, well, I don't remember that. I remember all the bags getting lost and I hated it. I had to call, you know. I was about to say you would share the memory, (laughs) but not in that scenario. (laughs) But, you know, you know, you get to pick and choose what you, what you remember, but sitting in silence sometimes is good. Let's say both of you like to read and, you know, you're in this, you obviously can't read the same book. That that would be annoying. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's over your shoulder the whole time. Yeah, exactly. I'm done with this page. <laughs> Flip it. Hurry up. Flip it. What are you, what are you, what are you reading? Or what? And then you're being chastised for how slow you read. Exactly. <sighs> Be like you won't understand this one word. Like what word? Well, you'll get to it, and then you won't know what it is. But but you know what? Though, and I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to digress just a just a little bit. I wonder if anybody's ever done. I've I've certainly never done this before. But you know, nowadays with the phone and everything. But what if, like, let's say I I, I got with an avid reader, and I'd be like, hey, why don't you read out loud? And I'll just sit here and I'll I'll listen mm-hmm. while you read out loud. And it could be just a good novel or something, right? Like I, I would, that to me sounds awesome. It's happened to me before. Because, you know, I don't listen to a lot of, I listen to audiobooks. I don't read a yeah, lot. He, he don't know how to read. <laughs> but yeah, so see, that's what I'm saying. That that to me would be awesome. It's if you've done that beautiful. for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's nice. <laughs> I don't know, because you have a sinister smile on no. my cheek. <laughs> How nice is it, pray tell? No, it's just nice. Isn't it, though? That's what I'm saying, especially if, um, and again, you know, like hopefully this isn't, but like if your partner has a nice voice, mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be great. Because if your partner has, you know, yeah, they, not the best <laughs> voice in the world, obviously, like. I was just, yeah, I was going to do an annoying voice, but like, I don't want to offend anybody. Right, but right. Like, this is probably like, well, your voice is pretty annoying. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Anyways. another aspect of quality of time is listening. So mm. one big complaint from women is that we just want to be heard. We feel like the guy's not listening. I'm sure you're going to say like, yeah, we're listening. But like, that's what we feel. And sometimes when we, we just have to say it out loud, but guys want to fix everything. So when I'm telling you this thing, your mind is automatically going to, how can I fix it? Rather than just listening to me. Yeah. That's, That's a big I, complaint. I apologize. Were you not were, listening? Were you, <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? When, when you started talking, I got a, I got a message and I looked at my watch. You see, <laughs> no, case in no, point, but, but exactly I, but I what heard I it. And I, I looked up and you're like, oh yeah, they don't listen. And I'm like, oh crap. I, <laughs> she's talking about me. <laughs> well, you are a man, so you're included in this. But I, <laughs> But I got most of what you said. So let me, let me oh just, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I, let me just kind of say it back. So yeah, you, you're saying that they, instead of trying to fix a problem, sometimes they're just looking for a sympathetic ear. And women would consider that, most women consider that quality time because you're showing an interest in what I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. You're not like you have your own agenda yeah. is to fix it. It's not that you're just calmly listening and I'm just yeah. sharing that moment with you, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I've 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 done that before. I've learned that lesson. Uh, and there's a lot of times that I have to hold back from making a comment or trying to um, say things to, to try to help fix the situation. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very difficult. What's interesting about that is if I just listen, let's say they go on, let's say I start out by like, hey, how was your day? And then they go on for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> which happens. <laughs> which, which, which it does, it does. What's interesting about that, again, and if you have to pay, like you have to genuinely uh, be listening, right? Asking questions and, you know, participating in the conversation. But if you do that, even though it's 90% her talking, mm-hmm. she will, for whatever reason, feel that that was one of the best quality times that you ever had. Exactly. And there's I had a great say time. That, yeah, that was a great <laughs> conversation. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm glad that you did. <laughs> yeah. But but no, absolutely. Listening, uh, oh my gosh, I can't I can't begin to stress the the importance of listening. Right. Fixing it, that's a hard thing because that's what guys do. Oh. We just like to fix things. We we see a problem and we want to fix it and we want to move on to the next problem. That's just how our brains are built. Well, the book is gonna give you fellas a couple of tips and on how to be a sympathetic listener. So and mm-hmm. to your point, yeah. okay, this is uh there's seven of them here. I'm just gonna list them out. One is maintain eye contact. Um, don't engage in other activities while you're listening, like you did to me just a minute ago. <laughs> um <laughs> Listen for feelings. I didn't know this at the time. <laughs> yeah. See? Okay. Well, we're learning together. We are. So um, listen for feelings and then observe body language, refuse to interrupt, ask reflective questions, and express understanding. See? I got the the last bit of those. Because you weren't listening to the rest? No, but I mean, I wasn't listening to that. Like, yeah, you have to be attentive. You have to be an active listener. You yeah. have to pay attention. You have to genuinely take an interest in that. And 
Yeah, they, they... And sometimes it may just be you telling your partner, like, if you know that they're notorious for kind of like, you know, looking around or being occupied with something else, you could just say like, baby, I need you to listen to what I'm saying. Can you please give me your attention? Yeah. I think it's totally fine to ask for that. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. You're like, hey, listen up. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's... um Yeah. No, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. And the reason why I say it that way is because... um so for me, you know, I'm, I'm, cause I think with the love languages, uh, I don't, and this is going to sound weird, but I don't think it necessarily has to be within a relationship. Right. I think it can also be by yourself, you know, believe it or not. Right. So doing things that you like to do, yeah. um, you know, obviously, you know, words of affirmation might be a little bit tougher because, but you actually can, like, I remember, um, I was once with a, with a, with a woman and she would send me or put notes and little post-its. Mm -hmm. So even though she wasn't there telling me, I can read it and I'm just by myself. So I'm like, oh, that's a word of affirmation. And she's giving it to me, mind you, yeah. but it still sticks the same way. Um, and you can do that. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know if vision boards are still a thing, but, you know, you can always give yourself a pep talk. Like, yeah. you know, you, we all do. You look in the mirror, you're like, man, I'm hot. <laughs> I'm so freaking, like, it doesn't matter. Like, it never all, happened well, for me. <laughs> no, I've done that before. And even though I, I know I'm not perfect, like I have a dad bod, there's nothing <laughs> very appealing, but I'm still kind of psyching myself up and be like, man, look at this hot dude. You know what I mean? Like, you're so freaking hot, dude. Like, keep it up. Um, and sometimes you need a little pep talk or, yeah. or like if you're about to go do a presentation, you're like, I got this, I got this, I got this. You well, know? I agree hundred percent quality time for ourselves. That's what they say. always like, I need some me time. That's quality yeah. time. That's all that means. Yeah. Yeah. You just and, need to focus on you. And you should treat yourself like, like somebody that, that, that you love. I, I'll, I'll put it to you this way uh, for me. And this is just, you know, personally, I, I, I'm used to taking care of a lot of people, right. For one reason or the other. Um, and I remember, you know, after, you know, the divorce and, and, and the kids are being taken away, I had to re, I had to figure out some stuff about me. And I know that sounds stupid, but it's just for the first time, nobody was asking anything of me. I mean, you know, I didn't have a wife. I didn't have the kids asking me. Nobody was calling me up saying, hey, I need you to come over and do this, blah, 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 blah. So at that point, I was just like, oh, okay. And so sometimes when you neglect yourself and, you know, parents sometimes do that because they're trying to meet their kids' needs. They forget that they themselves also need to be taken care of. And I hear it all the time when the woman's like, yeah, all this is going on and, and, and they're starting to get sick and you're like, hey, you need to take, well, I can't, I can't take time off or I can't do that. I need to be there for this person and that person. Like, yeah, but understand that if you go down, <laughs> you get sick or if you don't take care of yourself, all of that's going to fall apart. So you need to take some time for yourself, even though you think that you're being selfish, mm -hmm. it's okay to do that. Like you need to be, if, if what you need is just to be by yourself with your thoughts without anybody asking you anything, mm -hmm. go do that. Yeah. Go do that until, and once you start taking that approach and you know, that self-love is something else, you know, things start, things start to improve. You start, you know, watching what you eat and you, you know, it, you start exercising, you motivate yourself like, come on, let's go out and do this, blah, blah, blah. But anyways. Yeah. Well, another dialect of quality time, and this is obvious, we kind of talked about this, this is activities. So mm -hmm. doing an activity together. But I also thought about when you're with someone, if they have some kind of hobby and then they bring you into that, you may end up really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And you're only broadening your own horizons by doing that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it's it can be beneficial to you as well that probably in a way you didn't realize. You're like, oh, yeah. I love to shoot skeet. I had no idea or whatever, you know. <laughs> I just think that taking another... <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm being silly, but when you said that, I just... You thought the song? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Most people won't understand that, but let's just keep going. People sorry, in our but generation. I was like, yeah, I love doing that too. <laughs> it's my favorite pastime. <laughs> sorry, I'm being totally gross here. Uh, but anyways, yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, but yeah, just doing something together. Or, and even if you don't like it, you know, like... Um, I don't know, like I don't play video games, but like if they weren't doing it all the time, they're like, hey, come watch me. Like let's say it's just occasionally. Yeah. I would probably enjoy, I'll tell you an example. I just thought of one. So I really like to observe my partner's um, 
um, how they're acting when they watch okay. a movie that I've already seen, but oh, they haven't. Yeah. So the enjoyment that I get when other people are laughing at a movie or a show and it's like, I know it's coming. So it's not a surprise to me. So when the funny part happens, I look at my partner because I want to see yeah. how they're going to react. Yeah, sure. No, I mean, that, yeah, I think What's a so lot funny of about I, I, that? I, I a, Amy Schumer did a skit about that. Oh. <laughs> so as you were talking, I was like, yep, yep. Um, but no, I get that. I think uh, well, I'll give you an example too, where I see it all the time is in poker because guys typically like to play poker, but, um, I was at a game not too long ago and it was mixed. It's like everybody was coupled up. Mm -hmm. I was the only, I think I was the only single person there. I know there was another guy that was also single, but you see more women because it's like the couples come over and it's a great opportunity to socialize. I mean, it's a game, so you're trying to win too, Yeah. but it's also, that's the beauty of poker. Even when guys are doing it, like it's just... You're, you know, shooting the... It's kind of like a house party at that point. The girls are just doing something different, maybe, if they're not no, they're playing. playing. Yeah, no, they're, I'm saying, yeah, like, oh, yeah. just saying, like, bringing your woman, like, yeah. if you had five guys and they all were married and they're like, hey, we're going to go play poker, the woman can go hang out with the women and it still be um, fun. And that's the thing. That's when things get a little uh -oh. dicey. <laughs> <laughs> because the problem is, and this is a major complaint, I don't know why, but uh, is that when that happens and all the girls get together... Uh -huh. They start talking about other things and they're not paying attention to the game. And then the guys get upset because they're like, hey, it's, it's your turn. Oh, I meant like turn. if they're in the kitchen, like there's <laughs> no, somewhere no, no. else. They, like, they, they actually play, but yeah. that's usually the, the, that's what happens. So they, <laughs> I hate to say it this way, but they try to separate them so that, so that they keep the game going yeah. and not constantly. Because they still, they can still talk to each other, but it's different if they're sitting next to one another. Because then they go on well, in this Well, maybe whole, the ladies will play for a game and then sit out for a game. Like, just do all yeah. your cackling when you're, like... They like it, too. Because, and, and, and to me, I think it, there's a reason why they like it. Because it, it it's a competition, but your physical appearance means nothing. Means absolutely nothing. It's, it's, it's purely mathematical and uh, psychological. And so you're, you could be the biggest dude in the, in the room and the smallest woman. And if she outsmarts him, she's going to win every time. And that's completely, that's what you have to do. So it like, I can see where it taps into like, okay, let's, let's compete mm -hmm. on a, that's about as even a playing field as you can possibly get. As far as women, women and men competing is a, is a game of like that with, of intellect and skill and whatnot. But anyway, yeah. sorry. And the book says that a byproduct of quality time is the memories which is a big thing for me. I really, I really like to be able to share memories with someone that I'm with or inside jokes or whatever, even you and I have them, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And like, that's all worth it to yeah. me Yeah, to have that quality time. That's a uh, look, you know, when you, at the end of your life, that's really what you're going to be thinking about. Yeah. Experiences, the time that you spent. Uh, I know I still think fondly of the, like even my buddies, right? And it doesn't even have to be romantic. It could be, just friendship. Like, remember that time we went hunting and, you know, we didn't have this and we didn't have that or there was a tiger or whatever they chased. Not tiger. <laughs> Lions and tigers and bears on my. <laughs> yeah, but it's, you know, we have, you know, wild hogs down here and it's like, remember that time that the wild hog chased you down and yeah. you were screaming like a little girl? Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that's what you do it. And, or like if you go camping mm -hmm. and it was miserable and like it was so bad, but yet you remember it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I remember we all huddled up together with no fire because it was damp outside. Whatever. Yeah, we do that a lot when we get together, like family gatherings. We'll talk about stuff from, you know, when we were growing up oh, yeah. and stuff. And like, it was horrible at the time. Like, yeah. remember that time we were all sick at the same time or whatever, <laughs> you know, like. Um, but it's a shared experience for sure. Yeah. But that's just a couple of different aspects of quality time. And I did look this up and. Uh, from a recent survey, quality time is ranked number one out of all the love languages. And I started thinking, it's kind of like what we were just talking about, like you're cherishing those memories the most. And I feel like that's why quality time is number one. Mm. Because like, you know what I mean? Well, I'm just trying to think of like, why is it more important? Why is it the most important out of all the love languages? Um, and I don't want to sound like a jerk, but... Out of that number one, was it a mix from it was men mixed. and women? I did look. <laughs> Actually, I think it was, I can't remember the percentages, but the women were a little bit higher, but like 7%. Like it was like men were 42% or women were 59 or so. Like it wasn't like a big difference yeah. between them. Okay. I mean, I... I you saying guys don't uh, like quality time? No, 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 <laughs> not necessarily. That's not what I'm saying. Um, 
But what I will say is, like you said, you know, sometimes you want some alone time, mm-hmm. and some people are more um, uh, in, enjoy their solitude more than others, right? Um, and so, and and I've run into this maybe because of I've even when I was married, I was I was alone for a lot of that time. That you learn to just be by yourself, and you you almost become accustomed to it. Like I said, you're you're familiar with it, and so in my relationships after that when they want to like just be together it's not that I don't want to but it's just like I was just planning on being by myself today yeah <laughs> but they're like no let's go do this and it's like I did that's not what I wanted to do but you're trying to be you know um as accommodating and you're like okay you know if it means that much to you then I'll go but it does kind of throw your plans into the like if you wanted to just kick back and just binge watch a, a show that day because mm-hmm. you've had a rough month and then on that day, she's like, no, I want to go hiking. <laughs> it's like, I want to go hiking. <laughs> it's yeah. not the day. Why? Or let's go over to my dad's house, which is like, oh, <laughs> no, just kidding. I love family. But let's just say again, you just don't want to be around a bunch of people. Yeah. You're like, okay. Because that could be considered quality time too. And it's like, okay, if you really, really want me to go, I'll go. But then again, we get into that whole thing of like, then they like if you're not as enthusiastic because again it was not what you had planned for that day. And they're like, "Are you having fun?" I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Well, you don't look like you're having fun." I'm, like, I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the the biggest debate with quality time is quality versus quantity. Yeah. We talked about that at the very beginning, but like I really think that people are going to define it so differently. It's really hard to pinpoint the. There's not just one definition of quality time. It can't be. No. Because we just already listed, you know, in a few minutes, just a bunch of different things that, like, you don't know. Yeah. So, like, even if you get with someone and both of your love language is quality time, if you define it differently, you're still going to have issues. I wonder if eventually they'll do something like that on the dating apps where they they go a little like more. Like a survey? In, uh, well, like. <sighs> like a little bullet point that says, like, your number one love language and then it lists it. Well, no, well, all the love languages, but they can, let's say it was quality time. It's like, let's say they have like a list of five things of what they consider, like hanging out, being alone together. Oh, you want them to define each yes, term? Yes, yes. <laughs> because, because again, let's say it is number one, uh-huh. right? And I totally understand that because, again, you want to do activities that you're having fun with and you want your partner to be there. The problem or the challenge there is finding things that you like doing together. Mm-hmm. Because if I like to be by myself with my own thoughts or reading and have you in the same room reading with me, but she is more outgoing and she wants to be social, like for her, because she's an extrovert, wants you to be out there with her at a party with a bunch of other people. And that's what she would consider quality time. It's like, yeah, we both want that, yeah, but we want different versions of that. So right. that's what I'm saying. Like in dating apps, if they ever went in there and said, okay, you have five choices for quality time. It's like staying home together, going out to dinner together, being around family, being at a party, you know, going, doing an activity. Mm-hmm. Out of those, which one, and you can maybe pinpoint closer to where you're at. But the problem is, and trust me, I'm on dating sites, so <laughs> i tell you what the problem is. The problem is, is that everybody says everything nowadays. Mm-hmm. And and what you'll see is, uh, and I read a lot of female dating app um uh, profiles and they're like you know i like to go out and get dressed up at the same time i like to wear a t-shirt and be at home it's like okay got it (laughs) i don't know what that means right the other ones will tell you in their profile like i love i'm an avid hiker um you know i'm an equestrian i like to ride horses whatever you know i have my dog and i love going dog walking or whatever so they'll kind of tell you what they like doing yeah and and don't get me wrong guys are bad about this you know if they read the profiles they're like i don't care is she cute (laughs) which is really a bad way of doing it I guess it depends if you're looking for a long-term relationship. It probably would behoove you to to read what the pro, what what she's into, yeah. because what difference does it make if she's super attractive and then you go, let's say she does give you the time of day, but you guys are total opposites and you don't like doing the things she likes to do and she doesn't like doing the things you like to do. It's I'm not saying it wouldn't work, but you're yeah. I feel like I would going probably uphill on more. That one. Um, wanting to date someone who did have the same love language as me. I think it would be, in my view, a little bit easier. So if I read that on a profile of like, if mine's quality time and that's his too, let's just assume he's not lying. (laughs) That like, you're like, okay, I think this would be 
It takes this whole trying to figure out and trying to treat your partner in a different love language than that of your own, which is hard to do. So like mine is like, I love to give gifts and I like to get them too. But if I'm with someone that gift giving is like low on their list, they're not going to understand. They don't either care really what I get them. It doesn't mean anything to them. And then they're not going to do anything for me in return because that's just not the love language they speak. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. But I think even... Even breaking that down into categories, I think, is what we should yeah. do. It's it's too, uh, and some of that, like you said, we've gone through very uh, various definitions in in uh, what did you call them? Uh, not correct. Oh, dialects. Dialects of, mm-hmm. of 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 that, and I think it you can apply that to all of those, right? right. Because again, you know, and I, it's, you know, I met this one girl. I'll, I'll say it again. I think we talked about it on the lo- other love language, and her thing was gift giving. And she was already thinking about getting me the the collar mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The clips or whatever they called, which is fine, but that's not very personal to me. Yeah. So if but she saw a need, she did, she did, but that's what I'm saying. So if you're going to get a, um, and I don't want to call them generic gifts, right? But let's just say you a gift card. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, let's say I, I, let's say you don't have a mop for whatever reason. I'm like, you need a mop, and that's what I give you. And I'm constantly looking around your house to see things that is needed mm-hmm. versus something specific to you. Right. That might be different because it's like I'm giving you a gift. Yeah, but it's not. Because like, it's more effort to figure out what it is they really want or specific to them because I can visually see you don't have a mop because here's yes. where the mop would be. Yes. It's easier. Yes, absolutely. And that's what I'm saying. And I've, I've done that before where they give me gifts. And actually I did appreciate it because I was like, I, I did need this. And mm-hmm. then I started using it. Um, so it could be personal in that sense, but that's what I'm saying. It depends mm-hmm. because some people want um, very specific to that person, right? Like I want you to pay attention to me and give me a gift specific to me versus, you know, perfume. You know, there's nothing wrong with perfume, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, okay, sure. You know what but I mean? But it could be like a perfume she said that her mother wore and maybe exactly. her mother had passed and exactly. it means a lot to her. Exactly. Versus I just saw this and it smelled good and mm-hmm. thought you needed it. Yeah. It's like, okay. And maybe... Perfumes, perfume is not like say you don't have any perfume or you mm-hmm. only have one mm-hmm. or two and it's like hey I'm trying to broaden your horizons and it's like yeah thanks like I know this fragrance I don't like it but thank you anyway yeah. you know, you're not going to say it like that harsh but you know what I mean yeah well in my research and I thought this was very interesting according to in 2023 this is so weird I get why but like they said that texting is the new quality time now <laughs> I get it Cause we're in the day and age of internet and like, you're you're, you're going into, (laughs) going into dangerous ground. But that's what they say. So, I mean, like you have to think about, and I'm kind of probably excluding like our parents generation, like, you know what I mean? Before cell phones, before the internet, like way before we were before, but no, 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 before us. (laughs) Okay. Cause I lived in the time when there was no cell phones and internet and whatever, but like. These pigeons. Yeah. (laughs) Snail mail. Horseback riding (laughs) to deliver this love letter. I remember Paul Revere used to deliver my mail. What are you guys doing? But But like, I just thought it was a really interesting of like, is that where we're going? This is going to sound terrible, but like, is that where we're at right now in the stage of our lives where texting is considered spending quality time with a loved one? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but what I will say is that uh, texting in particular, um, I can talk a little bit about that, uh, but there's other forms of technology that they also consider um, like FaceTime. Mm-hmm. So if your partner's in a different city or whatever, they're in their own house, whatever, you can FaceTime them and you still, because you're looking at a face, right? they're not there, obviously. <laughs> it might as well be a phone call, except you get to see their face, so it's video, but they're equating that to it and they, they're just a comforting, uh, it's a little more I can comforting. understand that more because you can picture them sitting across from you on the couch. But the, the text thing, the reason why it has evolved, and I remember I was talking to... Um, I was talking to someone and they were explaining to me that they were in a relationship previously and they said, I knew exactly when it was over. And I said, oh yeah. She said, yeah, because of the way he texts me. Mm. And as soon as he texts like that, I knew exactly that we were done. Did she say, can you reveal like what, like what kind of text? It it, it had to do, because here's the thing, it's a whole thing when it comes to texting. Mm-hmm. Um, the length of the text the context of it, 
the grammar of it to a certain degree. Um, you know, whether they're giving you memes. Um, and I think what it was is what she was saying was normally he would um, text a little lengthier. Mm. And that one was very small. Like, so let's just say you have an elaborate good morning text or whatever. And you're like, hey, hope you have a great day. You know, be safe out there, blah, blah, blah. Good morning. You know, have a bunch of coffee, whatever. However you do it. And then the next day you just get morning. <laughs> That's after you've been in the relationship for a while. <laughs> it's just morning. Morning. Eh. Yeah, or just GM. A, yeah, it's not even spelled out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then you can tell. Um, and then there's also, I've also read in the past too, that you can tell who's into who more based on like if you, when you're texting, if your texts are way lengthier and theirs are very small and mm. very short, mm-hmm. like it, it, the implication there is the one that's putting all this effort into this text is more into you than the other person. And I don't know that that's necessarily true. Yeah. Cause what if it's like, well, here's all the things I had to do today and I must, I can't just say, okay, sounds good. No, <laughs> like, but just in general, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like, like how was your day? And let's say they reply and they're like, it, it was good. Yeah. Like, okay. And then, but then they, how was yours? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, For today I did this. I had, this. I, did, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I had a few things that I had to close out, had some meetings, blah, 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 blah. And then you send it back and they're like, okay. And you know, <laughs> that might not necessarily mean that they're not into you, but I can see how they can read into that and be yeah. like, hmm, like he's not, or she's not responding so much. And then there's the other part too, how fast you reply, because that's another thing. And they call you out on that too. Mm-hmm. So if you... If you get it, let's say you read it, and I've I'm I'm bad about this. Let's say they send me a text mm-hmm. and I read it and I want to reply, but I don't know what to reply because I catch myself. Cause the last thing that women want is a boring dude. And I try not to be boring in my replies. So I'm I'm trying to be a little more, you know, entertaining or, or you know, that be the generic I'm doing fine kind of thing. Yeah. My day was good. You know, because that doesn't give you anything, right? Yeah, it's pretty it's, lame. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You can do that a couple of times, but yeah. but over time, like, my understanding is when they ask you that, they really genuinely want to know, right? They're trying to generate a conversation because right. if you, how was your day good? How was yours good? That's the end. You're over. Mm-hmm. So there's no connection there. But if you start going on like, oh, you know, so-and-so girl came in today and she had her little attitude, blah, 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 and I yeah. had to set her straight. You're like, oh, wow, I can't believe it. now you've got a little banter. Now you're like, oh, okay. And then she might ask what you about... What if the guy's not listening? Like, he didn't listen to me earlier. What if you try to tell him about your day and then he not listen? Well, we're talking about texting, though. So he can read it. So he can what if he, <laughs> what he, if he know how opens to read the text but then doesn't read it? Well, that's what I'm saying. So sometimes when you get it, you don't know how to reply exactly. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to make it not boring or generic. You're trying to put a little more context to it. And sometimes I'll read it and then walk away. And I'm like, okay, let me think about what my reply is going to be. And then, you know, I start doing something and you know how inspiration works. It's when you're least thinking about it mm-hmm. and all of a sudden something happens. You're like, Ooh, I know exactly what I'm going to tell her now. And then you text back. But within that time frame, is like an hour they went by or 30 minutes or whatever. Yeah. They interpret that as like, Oh, he's not into me because he's taken so long to reply. And it's like, it's not that it has nothing to do with me being into you. It's, uh, it's not like you and I standing here. If I ask you a question and then you pause for five minutes. <laughs> Or 30 minutes, I'm like, uh, can you hear me? You know what I mean? Like, you can't do that. You have to reply immediately. Like, okay, I don't, or let me think about it. But with text, you have that luxury of like, okay. Deal get, with it later. Well, well, it's it's just like writing a paper. You're not going to write every single thought that comes into your mind. You have to formulate a sentence mm-hmm. and then a paragraph and then formulate and structure it in such a way that you're conveying your ideas or your narrative or whatever. So you, it, it, you shouldn't be replying immediately. And then for the people that can do that and they're just really good and quick and, you know, they have quick responses, God bless them. But <laughs> I'm not that guy. It takes me a minute to think and formulate like, okay, let me let me give you something good instead of just generic. Yeah, I'm good. I'm all right. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I was just thinking about the when you were talking about um, if it takes a while to respond, people will interpret that as you're not interested. But like there's so many things that could like be happening like I do this too when you're talking about like thinking of how you're gonna respond I don't ever do that because I always know what I'm gonna say but like sometimes I'll open the text and I'll read it and then something will happen and I'm like okay I'll come back to this and then you're working or whatever and then like five hours you're like oh my god I didn't even say 
And then you go back and you're like, did I respond? I'm like, oh no. So then it's like, I'm just saying there's a lot of possibilities. Well, and I, and so I'll, I'll, I'll say this much about that. If the longer that you wait to reply back, <laughs> uh-huh. then your reply better be awesome because that will bring them back. Because if they ask you, yeah, if you how wait you, five hours and you say it was good, yeah, exactly, they're gonna be like this <laughs> sob. You better not. You better text me a little That's more. It. You better give me something. But, I like it. But if you if you um, reply back, let's say again, we're talking about the, the lady from work and Karen that she deals with, right? And so if you replied back, it's like, yeah, today I had my own Karen. Mm-hmm. So and so came in and she threw a fit. Blah blah blah. It's like okay. He understands, like he's, he remembers a conversation. It's specific to me. And, and, it, and usually what ends up happening is as soon as you send that text, they're going to reply back immediately. Oh yeah. What happened? Cause now you're like, okay, he has his phone. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly he has it because he's texting. And you know, like you said, so much can happen throughout a day. Right. I'm doing laundry. I'm ironing my clothes. I'm doing the floors. Uh, I'm watching a show that I'm really into. I mean, it's not that I don't care about you, but like I'm really entrenched in this, in this, in this drama or whatever. And and as soon as you're done, you can reply back. But but here's the thing. Here's here's why I think it's considered quality time. Because it is especially if it's a good banter between each other, mm. and you got the joke going on or whatever. Even if there's a lot of time that goes in between that, you know it's another person, and it's not a generic. It's again very specific to you. And I think once people get that that. Who doesn't want that? Like, I'll put it this way: I'm, a, I'm, you know, for me, I buy a lot of my suits and blazers off the rack. But if I were to go into a place and I was to get fitted for my own suit specifically for me, that's a whole nother ball game. Because now I'm gonna feel like this is me specifically for me. This is not anybody can get this mm. right. Like, it, it, it's only going to fit me and my body at this moment. <laughs> So don't don't gain weight after that because you have to go get another suit. But again, and I'm assuming that for for, for women it's the same thing. If you have a dress that's tailored to you, mm-hmm. or a designer, you know, like you see the, the the when they go to like these award shows and they're like, so and so, you know, designed this specifically for her. Like they bring them in and they're like, okay, let me get your body type. Here's a dress. And what's this, most flattering for you? Exactly, like that famous Jennifer Lopez, you know, that green mm-hmm. dress or whatever. It's like that's. It fits her and only her, you know, Michael Jackson's glove. I mean, it's a generic glove, but still my point being is that it's specific to you, only you. Nobody else will be able to, I mean, they, they can fit in it, but it's not going to fit. It's mm-hmm. meant tailored to you. So if you can do that and you can make somebody feel special, I think you're going to, it'll go a long way. They'll consider that quality time. I guess and they just, feel closer to you. Yeah. It just seemed weird when I first read it. I just didn't really think about it. Maybe I'm just a little bit more old school, but I'm not saying anything with the phone can be because the FaceTime part. I text you a whole bunch of stuff one time and you don't get, I didn't get nothing back, <laughs> but I know you, I know you well enough to know that like either A, you didn't have anything to say or too much time went by and you're just like, I just talk to him later. Like, I don't care. So I get it. I, no, no, I get it. I don't take it personal, but I know you. But yeah. if I was the type of person that needed that, then I, you know, I'd be like, hey, come on. <laughs> Not even an LOL. Can I get an LOL? I thought, it, you know, it's funny that you bring that up because I did think about that the other day because there are times where you'll text me something and I won't respond because I just don't have anything to say to it. <laughs> no. But like, I always wonder, I'm like, does he think that I'm being rude? Like, no, I know you're not being okay. rude. Okay. But I, I, it has crossed my mind. Actually, recently too, I was like, I hope he doesn't take my no responses. Like, I don't care. I do. <laughs> but like, I don't know, have anything to say. Well, sometimes I'll read it back myself and I'm like, really, what do I expect her to say? You know, I okay. didn't... <laughs> Because some of it's just information that I'm giving you. Yeah. Like, it's not a question or... Sometimes I'll just send you emoji. Like, if I don't know what to say, like, here's yeah. an emoji. Like, <laughs> smiley face. Emojis are the best. Oh, yeah. my gosh. You could have a whole entire conversation with emojis. It's absolutely the and best. And they come out with new ones all the time. Every time I go to, like, send one, I'm like, there's, like, a new fruit or something. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> we didn't have strawberries before. <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes I look for them, right? Because you can, I don't know how Android folk, I don't know you guys, but uh, yeah. for Apple, you can type in a word and then if there is an emoji associated yeah, with mine it. mine does that. It. But then I think sometimes those emojis, you can use them for other things instead of what they were intended for, which is again also oh, yeah. fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Certain fruits and vegetables uh-huh. are just fruits and vegetables. Yeah, but there's You're like, emoji. what are you eating today? <laughs> There's a picture of a peach. What do you mean? I was eating peaches. 
<laughs> so your boyfriend's in town. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but certain things with the phone I can understand because I remember growing up, um, talking on the phone was like the thing to do. You yeah. stayed up with your boyfriend all night, talking on the phone until the either the battery went dead, you both fell asleep on the phone or something like mm-hmm. that. Like that was a big deal. So I do consider that quality time. Or if you have a situation where you do have to live away from your spouse for periods of time or something, whatever it is, maybe they travel for work. Yeah. Those things are going to be really important to you. So maybe the texting for those people mm-hmm. is going to mean way more. It's different. So, so you know, technology is not necessarily a bad thing. It can actually bring you closer, yeah. believe it or not. And, oh, for sure. Social and, media in general. Yeah, and especially like in Texas. I don't know what it's like in other cities, but I can tell you in Texas, dating is 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 challenging only because even though they might be in the same general area, <laughs> general area could be... 30 to 50 miles away. Yeah, you can't walk to places in Texas. <laughs> so it's still a bit of a drive. Yeah. So even though, you know, it's not technically a long-term, I mean, excuse me, a, a, long, a distance. long distance relationship, mm-hmm. but it is, it's not easy to go back oh, over. Like you can't sure. see them every day if you wanted to. Let's for just sure. Put it that way. Yeah. If you live like an hour away without any traffic or like you don't know, right? Traffic right. in Texas. Pfft. It I might, mean, as, but it might as well be a long distance relationship. Exactly, I agree. So, but but that's what I'm saying. It's still in the general area. Yeah, it's just like it, it can range anywhere between thirty and fifty miles. And in Texas, that's not always easy. I to hear navigate. that complaint about people who are not from here that they say that when we say Dallas, we mean like a hundred. Yeah. Mile, we like mean radius. all of North Texas, really is what we meant. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's 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 how Texas is kind of divided. The, the middle part, I don't, I don't, I couldn't even t- name you a city yeah, in the middle know. part. I had but this, it's like, like one north and south. coworker, he was asking me where I live, and I said, "Oh, I live in Dallas." And he was like, "Yeah, but where in Dallas?" I was like, "I live in Dallas." And he was like, "But." What's the what's the city name on your letters? I'm like Dallas. Dallas. I live in the actual <laughs> town of Dallas. It's not Plano. It's not whatever. It's like no but, Dallas. But but to that end, if you live in a rural area, mm-hmm. and you know, obviously it might be slim pickings in that in that town that you're in, and you decide to date somebody that's further away, the phone can actually make things a little easier. Like you said, you can also FaceTime. Yeah. So you can actually see a face in. And do that sort of stuff. So it's not always bad. And I guess you can't equate that to the quality time. Yeah, I think FaceTime would satisfy me if I was with someone that had to travel for work. I think it would feel like I'm not saying like gone forever, but like if they have to leave for two weeks at a time or something, FaceTime would be make me feel good. Well, and and I'll bring it, I'll, I'll kind of break it down in a different way, right? And I feel so bad whenever I think about this because I know this. So I'm about to say, and at the same time, I don't always practice it, but. <laughs> But let's just say for the sake of argument, none of us know how long we're going to be on this earth, right? We're all just, we know we're all going to die at some point. (laughs) We just don't know when, right? And so let's just say for the sake of argument that, uh, that fate, being fate, means that, you know, your partner is going to pass away in a year from now. And then you have to, if you do the math, the math on it and it's like how many times am I going to be with that person again Mm -hmm. and so maybe you come up with um in a year I'm going to see him once a week so that's 52 times an hour each one of those times so I'm only going to get 52 hours from here until I'm never going to see them again Mm -hmm. when you break it down that way you're like "Mm, maybe I should spend more time yeah that sounds terrible (laughs) and that's if you see him every week but let's say you skip a week now it's down to 26 so you have 26 hours left with this person um, Which is really just like a day. Exactly, exactly. It's one one long day. If you really, that's what I'm saying. If you mm-hmm. break it down that way, then you start really starting to pay attention to like, wait a minute, I take it for granted that I can go see them, and I'm not. And 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 so you know, and I don't want to go you know too morbid on that, but sometimes life will put you in a position where you know that your time is limited. Right. Mm-hmm. The rest of us are just assuming that we're going to keep on going until uh, until we die of old age. Right. That's kind of how you live your life. But it's always it's always good to put things in perspective mm-hmm. and realize that you really don't know the pr- truth and you don't know. Um, and I can tell you, like, even in a failed relationship, uh, a lot of times if you reflect back and if, if it's a healthy reflection, not not saying like, well, it was all that person's fault. Like they're just horrible individuals. Like obviously there's some issues that you need to deal with. And maybe they were, I don't know. 
But let's just say it ended and you start missing them and you can think to yourself, like, maybe I should have spent more time with them. Maybe I should have said nicer things to them. Maybe I, I could have went with them when they asked me to. I mean, all that time is gone, so there's nothing you do about it. But what you can do, like you said before, for the next person that comes along, you know now when they ask you to go out with them, do it. Don't don't fall into the same bad habit of, of telling them no and I don't want to do it because, again, you don't know how long you're going to be there. So, But, but with, to that end, you have to be somewhat selective on your time because that's the one thing that everybody will agree is too short and you don't get any of it back. Mm -hmm. So spend it well, <laughs> yeah. you know? Well, the chapter ends with a couple of tips um, for good quality time. It's like um, being engaged, eye contact, no cell phones, show interest. Having date night is important. Um, and when you are on the date, make sure you try to have minimal distractions um, and then avoid canceling plans um, going to bed at the same time, even if you're not, you know, just like, okay, it's time to go to bed. Um, I love that. I hate it yeah. when I'm dating somebody that has a irregular sleep thing. Mm. I hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Because yeah, nothing will keep me up more than if I'm a, I'm trying to sleep and they're up. Yeah. I'm about walking around in the house. I yeah. don't like it. Anyway. Well, it's kind of part of um, also too, they talked about daily rituals, kind of keeping a routine of whatever that quality time is. If your thing is you eat dinner together at the table, yeah. keeping that routine and quality time really is just, like they said, it's just about togetherness. Mm. So you can define it really any way that you want to or you and your partner can come together on that. But I think that's, uh, I mean, it's number one for a reason. I yeah. get it. Well, I saw an observation that I don't know if I've mentioned this. I hope I'm not in, and if you do, we can cut it out. <laughs> 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 but I went I went out to dinner. I think I told you this and I was I was walking by one of the tables as we were leaving. I was, we had just, I just paid or whatever. We were leaving. And I saw this young couple and they were sitting across from one another and they were both on their cell phones. Mm. And I just thought to myself, why? Right. Cause I thought the whole point of, cause you could have done this at home. Yeah. But if, if I guess in, in their minds and, and I was trying not to judge, but I was asking a legitimate, like why? <laughs> cause it doesn't make sense to me. If I'm, if you're, you're standing in front of me, and I'm going to be on the phone and you're going to be on your phone and we're okay with that. I don't understand. But maybe somebody can explain it to me. But but they were sitting across from each other on their cell phones and I'm like, you could have done that at home. But if you consider this quality time, I, I guess. And they may. Or maybe one person's only doing it because the other one does it. You know what I mean? Like, it could be a lot of things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah. like, why would you... I don't know. And that's what I'm saying. If, they, if somebody can't explain it, please <laughs> explain that one to me. Because yeah. I'm old school perhaps. And I just figured, um, you know, when I go on a date, I always turn off my phone. Yeah. Even in, regardless of whether I'm dating you steadily or on a first date. Like I don't bring out my phone. I would do it even for friends of him. When I go to my family's house, my phone's on silent. Yeah. I'm not taking phone calls unless right. there's an emergency. Right. You've called me with an emergency a couple of times, I think, at my mother's. But like, you know what I mean? It just doesn't, it's out of respect. And I'm here to spend quality time with my family. Yeah. Yeah, because I so, can do that anywhere. But if I'm here, I'm here, right? right. The human experience, it is an experience. Cause <laughs> so, and I'll, I'll just put it this way, right? I had a friend of mine uh, and he told me, you know, when I was starting the podcast, he was like, he was like, why are you doing that? Like, it was like, oh, well, you know, we have conversations and whatnot. He's like, yeah, but like, you know, like, can't you just do something else or whatever? Or like, I don't understand why people want to listen to it. And I was like, all right, you know, fair enough. I was like, but... So he's him, not a fan. No, 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 no. He just he, he was trying to understand the fascination between podcasts oh. and why people do podcasts and why they listen to them. He mm. didn't understand why people listen to them. And then I said to him, I was like, okay, fair enough, good point. And I was like, but let me ask you a question. You obviously, I know you like music, and he's like, yeah, I love jam. And I was like, okay, well, then why would you go to a concert if you could just buy it and download their CD? And he's like, well. That's different. And I was like, is it? Because it's the same song, yeah. but they're singing. It's a different version, but you get the whole experience. You're there. You're with the crowd. You're the performance. They're going to tweak it a little bit. They're going to, it's going to be your favorite stuff. But technically speaking, you can go just download the song and listen to it. Why would you go to a concert? Yeah. And so you're missing the point. It's, again, it's an experience and people like to tap into that. So, you know, that's where where people fall off the rails, right? Let's say, again, you like going shopping and then you ask your boyfriend, like, hey, will you go with me? And he's like, you don't need me. Like, why? Mm. It's like, you're not getting it, man. It's an experience that you're <laughs> giving her. Go and do it. Like, just do it and you'll be fine and try to enjoy yourself if you can. Yeah, have him follow me around and roll in his eyes the whole time. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, who wants that? But uh, yeah, quality time, it's, uh, yeah, 
I've I've had my fair share of quality times. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're talking about a different type of quality time. <laughs> That's quality time too, by the way. Yeah. Just FYI. Maybe not for her. I don't well, know. Well, <laughs> and, and, and you know, I, I, I don't remember all the the love languages, but obviously the physical part. Mm-hmm. Even if it's even if it you know you're not you know having sex, but just you know. I'm assuming if you're around each other, you're going to touch each other to a certain extent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you might not be handsy and I'm sure we'll explore that in the other ones, but, but yeah. 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 Well, we hope that you guys stick with us. We got a few more to cover in the next couple of weeks, but um, stay tuned for next week. Yeah, absolutely. It was fun. Okay. Right. Bye. All right. Till next time. <laughs>